Okay, in this video I'm going to introduce relative velocity uh, as a, a topic in the Applied Mathematics course. This is the very first time we'd have seen relative velocity. However, it is not the first time we would have seen the fundamental tool in relative velocity, which is vectors. And relative velocity is analyzed solely by using vectors. And well, of course, what's usually involved with, with vectors, we have a bit of trigonometry, uh, a bit of algebra, and um, yeah, that's that's pretty much it. So the thing about this is, I was, I was talking to somebody recently, and I said that I was going to begin the, the relative velocity section, and I said, oh, that's the hardest, that's the hardest chapter in, in the book. And the book has, or on, well, say on the Leaving Certificate course, and he was talking about in the book. Uh, but the thing is, the truth of the matter is that there are much harder questions. There are, there are topics like, um, like differential equations, or I don't know what it will say hydrostatics, whatever. Like I, I, actually, hydrostatics isn't too bad. But anyway, you know, we have we have different other different topics, which to be honest, probably in my opinion, are more difficult. The dif difference, however, is that with relative velocity, people find it difficult to get the whole notion in their head. They they they're not able to look at it in the right way, and because they're not able to look at it in the right way, well, they're not able to do it. And what I mean by that is, well, if you're dealing with projectiles, so in my black bar, if you're dealing with a projectile, well, first of all, you would have seen your x-axis and your y-axis before. Now, of course, we do use these in, in relative velocity. But you're also dealing with, let's say, the motion of a projectile. And you can relate to that. You can say, well, that's like, um, that is like hitting a ball with a, or a slitter, excuse me, with a hurley, or, you know, hitting a ball with my foot. It's it's something you can relate to, and you can you kind of well if, you, if the the conditions for example for maximum range was that the height above the x-axis s sub y was equal to zero, and that made sense because the particle was back on the ground. However, for some reason, relative velocity, although yes, it, you can definitely relate to it in a similar fashion, people find it difficult to relate to it. So I'll show you an example of what relative velocity might mean. If you have car A moving this direction and moving it at 20 I hat like so and you have car B moving in this direction uh, we'll say now this direction in 60 I hat alright now I'm going to tell you the following we want to find out how fast is the car B moving relative to A or how much faster is B moving to A so if you can imagine the following imagine that you are on a motorway and the motorway will have Two, at least two lanes on it. So I'm going to draw it this way because we, we in, in, in my country, Ireland, we drive on the left hand side. Alright, so this is, we'll say we're moving 20 and we happen to use this, this unit vector here. So 20j. That's the speed you're moving at or the velocity you're moving at. And the car passes you out going at 60j hat. Now the question is, how fast does the car B move as you look at it, how fast do you feel it's moving? Do you feel that it's moving at 60, we'll say, meters per second? The answer is you don't. Do you feel it's moving at 20? The answer is you don't. What you'll actually feel is that it's moving at 40. Because you are moving as well in the same direction. So the speed it was going is, we'll say, relative to you slowed down. So that, was, that would make sense. Obviously, if you suddenly were going at zero, meters per second and this car was going at 60 well then you definitely see it's moving at 60 however if you're moving at 20 meters per second it will be, seem to move slower it will seem to move slower and if you move 50 it will seem to move even slower and if at some stage you move at the same speed as it it will seem not to move at all so if think about this now you look out the right hand side of your car window and you see another car beside you moving at the same speed as you well then it seems, if you weren't aware of, we'll say, the, 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 the terrain rushing past you, then it wouldn't seem to move. So its speed or its velocity relative to you would be zero. Conversely, or in the, in the other way, if, for example, I was moving in the opposite direction. Now, obviously, if I'm moving at zero, well, that, that doesn't have a direction, so it's just 60. What if I was moving at 10? So, if I was moving in the same direction as car B, then I'm slowing down, in, in, it, it, it slows down relative to me, but if I'm moving in the opposite direction, 
Well, surely this time it's moving faster relative to you, and it might move 70 j hat. And that, that kind of makes sense. If you're moving the opposite direction to something, then it seems to be moving faster. And the reason is... <coughs> excuse me. And the reason is as follows. That a man... Now, it's not, it's not good always to, to, to talk about certain names, because people seem to be afraid of these people. But if I mention the name Einstein... Einstein did a paper on relativity. All right now, I'm not saying that we're going anywhere near relativity, but it, it's it's a similar similar concept, right? So in relativity, he said that everybody can consider themselves to be stationary, and as a result, everything else is moving. W R T means with respect to you. So even though you're moving, say if you're moving at 10 meters per second, you, it, it is mathematically equivalent to say that you're stationary and everything else is moving at 10 meters per second relative to you. All right? So all that matters is the relative motion. It doesn't really matter what's actually happening. So when I say the car A is moving at 70 meters per second relative, or the car B is moving at 70 meters per second relative to car A, it does not mean that car B is moving at 70 kilometers a second. It means that in reference or in uh, in relation to the car A, it seems it's doing like that. It seems it's doing that. All right? So it's just, we're, we're, we're relating things. And like I said, the, these two frames of reference, you can say the frame of reference within which you are moving is equivalent mathematically to the frame of reference within which you are stationary. So you can always say either you're stationary and everything else is moving, or you are moving and everything else is stationary. You are allowed to do that it, because it, if you do the maths, it turns out to be the exact same thing. So how does this work out to work out for us? Well, I'm going to define the following. I'm going to define if I have two vectors, two velocity vectors, the velocity vector a and the velocity vector b. If I want to find out, all right, if I want to find out the velocity of a relative to b, so I write the, the this write it like that. And VAB is equal to VA minus VB. All right, so how does this relate to what we were saying? So we're saying that, for example, um, okay, well, first thing, the important things here is first of all, this is actual velocity. All right, that's actually what they are physically doing, and so is this actual velocity. However, this is not actual. This is relative. So this is like what I was saying with the 70 kilometers or meters per second. It seems that it's moving 70 kilometers a second relative to the other car. But its actual velocity would have been 60, we'll say. Alright? So how do we work out uh, which is which? What is A and what is B? Well, Let's just see if we can analyze this first of all to find out for ourselves. All right, let's see if we can analyze this. If I said the car A was moving this way, that's car A moving at, we'll say, 20. And this is car B. Now, I know the vector should be longer, but it doesn't matter. We'll say this is going at 60. Now, I said, relative to the car A, the car B seems that it's going like 40 meters per second, of course, because it's slowed down. It, it seems to be slowed down by the same speed as A. So we should get VAB being, or one of, we'll say, take this out here, 40 meters per second. So the only way we can get 40 is by having 60 minus 20. Alright? So 60 was B, 20 was A, so this was actually VB, VB, A. Alright? So the velocity of B with respect to A, which is exactly what we're thinking. The velocity of B relative to A. So A is the one that we said was, that can be said to be stationary. That is the stationary frame of reference. V, B, A. V, the velocity of B with respect to A. So how much quicker it's moving than A, or what is it, if A was stationary, what would B look like it was doing? All right? So, like I'm saying, what I'm saying is that the frame of reference is that A is, is actually moving at 20 meters per second. But I'm saying A can also think that he is stationary. 
he is inverted commas stationary. He's not actually stationary, but he, it is mathematically equivalent to say that he is at rest. So if he is at rest, if he is at rest, then B looks like it's moving 40 kilometers past it. All right? So that's what I mean by uh, with respect to or relative to. So what is VAB in this case? VAB. So that's equal to VA minus BB. Now these are vectors so that we have direction. So VAB is equal to 20, I will say 20, that was, what was a J hat, wasn't it? J hat minus 60 J hat. So VAB is equal to negative 40 J hat. Now, what does that mean? So let's just write in the initial, the, the first, first uh, result we had, we had VBA was equal to plus 40. And we, I suppose we use the unit vectors J hat. So let's think about this. Of course, we're defining plus J is in this direction, plus J like that. All right. So V V A B means the velocity of A relative to the to to the car B. The B one is seems to be stationary. It can believe it's stationary. Now it doesn't. It isn't in fact stationary, but it believes it is. And look, it's going it means the car A is going at negative 40 meters per second in if, if B thinks it's stationary, which is, is right, because of course the speed is right, and look, the direction is this way. All right, why is that? Because if you think about it, if you are in car B, and if, you th if you're driving past somebody on the motorway, and you pass a car, now, if you thought that you, if you said to yourself you were stationary, then it looks like car A, the one on your left-hand side, is actually going in the opposite direction. And that's why you have the negative sign here. Whereas the other way around, if we had VBA, the velocity of B relative to A. A, in this case, is the one who can believe he is stationary. Like so. And he, he believes that car B is moving at 40, km, or 40 meters per second in the positive J, which is exactly right. Which is what you would see if I was being overtaken by a car moving faster than me, and I thought I was stationary, it would look that the car is moving in the plus j direction by uh, its its relative speed, or its relative velocity. Alright, so that's the fundamental thing, and you need to get your head around that. You have to work out, remember, VBA. A, or the second one of these, is the one that believes it's stationary. And of course, these can be any letters you want. You could have VCD, VEF, whatever. Okay, so VEF, would mean the velocity of E relative to F, where F believes it's stationary. And this is the velocity of C relative to D, where D believes it's stationary. And finally, just to write it explicitly, this means VC minus VD, VE minus VF. All right. So uh, that's, that's, I suppose, a, a reasonable introduction to, to relative velocity. Thank you very much for watching. Pass it on to your friends and subscribe to my channel.